Watch Porch Talk, Thursdays, 7.30 p.m. The Mother and Daughter Team, keeping you informed on SVP TV. Greetings with the Holy Word, peace, and welcome to Porch Talk. Hey, y'all. <laughs> Porch Talk. That's a, pretty good, that's a pretty good name, eh? It is. Porch Talk. Welcome to Porch Talk. I'm Pastor Donnie Briggs, and this is, um... I'm Donnie Lachey. Donnie Her Lachey. Daughter. My daughter. Yours. Yep, this is my child right yep. here. Praise God. Hallelujah and all that stuff. <laughs> so... So... We have another wonderful show for you tonight here on Porch Talk. Porch Talk. I tell you the truth, it's going to be a good, good, hoot, hoot, nanny kind of a show. You hear me? All right. Yeah. So... We have a very special guest tonight, a lady I met some years ago, uh, had to be around 2016, 17. Um, she's a comedian. Uh oh. Uh oh. No wonder you're laughing all before you uh -oh. get started. <laughs> she's a comedian. She has her own little show. She's written books. Amen. And we're just going to be so excited to have tonight with us. This is my daughter, Donnie. I'm Donnie, but this is. Priscilla, my name not Priscilla, is it? No, it's not. It's Sybil. it's Sybil. A lot of people call me Priscilla. But that's fine, but my name is Sybil Marie Presley. That Sybil is S Y B I L, <laughs> and uh, I have a great name for Memphis, of course. And um, so happy to be here on Porch Talk, and I love porches. I grew up with a. Uh, Big old uh, front porches, and, and I think that's what happened to America, taking the big bite out of our country, is when porches disappeared. When porches so, disappeared. So we need to bring porches back <laughs> and build some homes, you know, with back porches and front porches where the community and neighbors can get together and drink Kool-Aid and dine together and yeah. And talk and help one another out. But I just love the name of your show, and thank you for letting me be on Porch Talk. <laughs> thank you for <laughs> thank loving you the for name coming. of our show and coming as well. Well, we're going to get started with prayer, Don. We're going to let you pray today. All right, our gracious and eternal Father, we thank you so thank much you, for Lord allowing God. us to be here. We thank you for bringing us along the way for the healing and protection. We thank you for allowing us to make it here and to reach out to the audience that we have that shall reach out unto others. We thank and we ask that you please lead and guide us to give the word that you would like for the world to have to make them be aware of the things that they may not be aware of. We hope that you thank guide you, us throughout the days of our lives. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, amen. amen. Man. So we ask everybody for a scripture and Priscilla. How oh, that keeps calling well, you Priscilla? Well, you know what? That was not if, me. If you want to call me Priscilla, <laughs> Silver, that's I'm so fine. solid. I'm so sorry. And as a matter of fact, a lot of people do that. So Priscilla, I guess might be my nickname. Or, <laughs> or who knows? Maybe Priscilla will be tuning in to the show. <laughs> Maybe she Maybe. will, Silver. That would be wonderful. Well, Silver chose Proverbs chapter 17. And she chose Proverbs 17 and 22. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to start at verse what? 19. 19. Okay, sorry. we're going to start at verse 19. Okay. He that transgresseth that, lo that loveth strife, he that exalteth his gates seeketh what? Destruction. So he that transgresses, tr he, he, he loveth transgression, loveth strife. They like to cause confusion. Yeah. They love disruption, chaos. He that exalted his gate seeketh destruction. So they they looking for something to, to destroy and be to, to eventually be destroyed. Right. So he that hath a forward heart findeth no good, and he that preserve perverse tongue falleth into mischief. So mm. you talking all that yang yang, you know, you know what I'm saying? What you gonna do? Well, you get strife out of your life. <laughs> That's right. So true. <laughs> so true. <laughs> Get it out your life. Step out my face. People with a forward heart, 
They find him no good. They're up to no good. They don't want no good. They don't see nothing good about you, me, or anybody else. No matter how good it is, they're going to see the negative. Right. They're going to always see the dark cloud. Right. Amen. Uh, so he that, in 21, said, he that begetteth fool, a fool does it to his sorrow, and he that fathers a fool hath no joy. What? He that fathers a fool has no joy. What does mean? I don't know. You ain't got a son and just complete fool. You just, let me tell you what my daddy told me. Like worry all the time? <laughs> no, they are, are foolish. They don't do nothing right. So my, my dad told one of my brothers one time, he said, son, you look, you're good looking. But you a blank, blank fool. <laughs> you just, I'm just saying. <laughs> that's, that's a lot right. of times how it goes. That's right. So, you know, you, you, you look at your children. You want the best for them and you hope the best for them. But mm -hmm. they always doing the negative thing, the wrong thing. They don't have any positive thing to say. No, they can't even think positive. And so they said that father has no joy. Because the son is like walk, constantly walking to the same wall. You don't know the wall is there. You walk into that wall Keep every making time. making the same mistake same over mistakes. and over again. And it doesn't that's not necessarily mean a boy, uh, uh, just a child. So he that begins a fool does it to his sorrow, and the father of a fool has no joy. So I, if you've got a child that just can't get it, keep making the same mistake, or you keep making the same mistake, don't you get sick and tired of being sick and tired of yourself? Sick and tired get of being sick Get you some t-shirts made and say, Play it cool. Don't act like a fool. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Play there it cool. There you go. All right. So, so why did you, what, what, why so did let's, you? Let's get to her verse first. Oh, we ain't got there yet. You know, uh, 22 okay. says, a merry heart doeth a good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dryeth the bones. So she yes. has a merry heart. Yes. Right. So she wants to be happy. Right. And that's why I like to do comedy and uh, encourage people. And um, so I'm an actress, and I like to, you know, be in films. And um, I'm an author. And that's one of my books right there. And then I do comedy on Platinum Films TV. And um, you can um, get some more information on that, of course. Uh, at the end of the show, I'll give you my contact information so that I can show you how to download an app and watch me on Platinum Films to make you laugh. <laughs> and I have different characters. She has different characters that, that she I does. That I mm -hmm. Can you do us a quick character? Uh, one is uh, Sister Magnolia. I'll just tell you about her. And uh, she wears like the little church hat. And Sister Magnolia is also on Facebook. And then I'm on Facebook too as myself, Sybil Presley. But Sister Magnolia, she... Uh, is a member of the Straighten Up and Fly Right Community Church with, past, <laughs> with Pastor Rolex. And uh, she has appeared in some movies as well. Right. And uh, so I uh, do comedy as that. And then this is one of my little side books here called The Soap Opera Grill. Mm -hmm. And that's me on the cover. Okay. And uh, anyway, I used to be a waitress. So I talk about things that get on waiters and waitresses' nerves, and it's also inspirational poems in here okay. as well. And um, Let me see it for a second. And mm -hmm. so I dress up as a waitress sometime on Platinum Films and some of my comedy shows and talk about things that go uh, on in restaurants. Okay. So uh, you can find uh, that book, and, and plus... There's my other book that's on the little pedestal there. What's the name of the book on the pedestal? It's called, uh, I don't know, it's so far away you probably can't see it. You're an Elvis fan. It's called, if. yeah. You're, uh, there it is, everybody. And uh, it's called. Uh, you're an Elvis you're, fan if? You're an Elvis fan if. And what that means, uh, that describes an Elvis fan. Like, you're an Elvis fan if you go to the candlelight service, or if you are uh, have a room in your house that's all decorated Elvis, or if you want to be an Elvis impersonator and you don't have a lot of money for a costume, some people actually get a, a white painter's suit, you know, mm -hmm. overalls, mm -hmm. and sew rhinestones on it. So oh, okay. that's the, the, the budget way. So if you do that, you're an Elvis fan. I have like about 114 descriptions of that 
And then I have a, original poems in the book that I wrote about Elvis and his friends and his family. Then there's quotes from celebrities about Elvis, like from Elton John and different people like that. Yeah, Dolly Parton in there and yeah, some others. Yeah, Dolly Parton and, and just a whole lot of uh, celebrities. And then there's uh, quotes and philosophy from Elvis himself taken from his interviews. And uh, then I spotlight uh, the uh, gospel side of Elvis. One of his uh, big hits was, you know, How Great Their Art. Yes, yes, it was. And it's hard to find anyone to beat his version of that song. And so I talk about that. And then a lady uh, has original paintings of Elvis that's in the back of the book, and she gave me permission to put that back there. And at the end of the book, I have a uh, poem that I wrote called The Sinner's Prayer. Mm. And it's the whole gospel in one poem. Okay. So <clears throat> someone can uh, read the poem from their heart, and they can give their heart to Jesus. Oh, oh so okay. So that's the... Uh, very last thing they see in the book. Okay. And the book, both books, uh, my waitress book is called A Soap Opera Grill. And uh, it's a book of poetry. <clears throat> like I said, it talks about, uh, has humor in it about things that get on waiters and waitresses' nerves, and the diner's nerves. And then it has inspirational poems like, Lord, help me make it through the shift. And, uh, you know, that type of thing. <laughs> so both those books are available on uh, Amazon Kindle. And uh, for people that live in Memphis, September the 23rd, uh, there's going to be a, a festival, Peabody in Vance. And uh, we'll have entertainment and vendors and uh, different authors there. I will be there autographing my book for those that would like to come by and get a copy. So um, if it's okay, can I tell people how to get in touch with me? Sure, of course. And I don't mind y'all calling me because uh, that's fine. It's 901-643-1982. 901-643-1982. And you can find me, Sybil Presley, right there on Facebook as well. So... Um, I would love to meet other authors besides myself and actors. And um, so uh, me and the, this lovely lady was in the movie together. Yes. With my friend Emily Pearls. Um, M. Pearl, uh, A-A-L, yeah, Attorney at Law. Attorney at Law. And y'all can find that. <laughs> you can look that up, too. And uh, Yeah, you can see that. You can find that. on. Is it on Tubi? It's on Tubi and uh, mm -hmm. various places. And... And you sang such a beautiful song. She has such a pretty voice. Thank you, Sue. Unstoppable. <laughs> so hopefully we can do some more movies together. Yes, uh, I think we're going to be doing one this coming, coming uh, 2024. I believe we are. We're going to mm -hmm. continue on doing some things together. And then my comedy shows, y'all can find on Platinum Films TV. But... Uh, it helps me if you get in touch with me through that phone number I gave you and uh, so that I can give you uh, information on uh, how to install the app, um, which is a particular link of which I get credit for, and I need 200 installers. And you can watch my uh, comedy shows free as well as other Christian movies free and entertainment. It's... Uh, a wonderful platformer, so get in touch with me and um, send me your phone number and I'll give you the link for that. And um, Can you give the link now? You, you have well, I can give it to you. It, it's called, um, it's installs.way.live forward slash Sybil. I'm going to spell that out. And that installs has an S on the end. I N S T A L L S dot W A Y dot L I V E forward slash Sybil S Y B I L. 
So that's what it is. And if you didn't have time, run and grab a pencil. Just get, <laughs> give me a buzz, and uh, I'll give it to you. 901-643-1982. And I just love making people laugh, and I like to get back to that scripture why I chose it. Uh, the gist of it that I wanted to point out is a merry heart does good like medicine. And uh, it's scientifically and medically proven that a happy person, uh, when you laugh, I'm talking about belly laughs, when you get so tickled you fall down on the floor and tears roll out of your eyes. Mm -hmm. I mean, good, hearty belly laughs affects your health. Hmm. Your, your very cells respond to it. Mm -hmm. And they had a man in the hospital that um, was actually dying with cancer. Mm -hmm. And um, he started, he took, a, I think, two or three days of watching Three Stooges and mm -hmm. all kind of things mm -hmm. to make mm -hmm. him laugh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what? He laughed himself into remission. Wow. A really? And that, that is documented. And I've never seen two people get in a fist fight with a smile on their face. Right. Right. So uh, smiling's good for you. And if you want something to laugh about, just look at yourself every time you pass a mirror. And Man, what's she trying to say? <laughs> and laugh at, and, and smile at yourself <coughs> like you're doing right now. <laughs> and, you know, babies laugh. They don't have to learn how to laugh. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, children laugh hundreds of times a day. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I chose that scripture. Mary Hart does good like medicine, and that's why I like to do comedy to make people laugh. Right. And um, I don't sing as good as you do, so when I do sing, it make uh, people laugh. It does make people laugh. <laughs> somebody, pa somebody paid me two dollars to quit singing one uh -uh. time. <laughs> really? <laughs> so uh, th that's why I like that scripture. I like to encourage people, and uh, this world needs more joy. It does. And people need your smile. Uh, I don't like to see prune-faced Christians. Mm. You know, those sour look on their face. Right. Grouchy. And <laughs> so we need to show love through joy. That's, that, would, that would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. So that, that's my thing. A merry heart does good like medicine. Amen. I agree with you. I know I've um, I seen this lady where she was talking about um, you know how you ask somebody and say, hey, how was your day? And they say, oh, it wasn't that good. Um, this person made me mad, da 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 And they tell you what the situation was. And she was like, that one situation that lasted for five minutes made your whole entire day bad. So basically what she was saying was, you can't allow five minutes to determine your whole day. You make a decision or a choice whether you want to be mad or let it go and be happy. So it is better to be happy, and I guess, and to find the humor in it, and just let it go. Yeah, yeah, it could, and you know, <clears throat> even years and years after somebody says something to you about something, sometimes you can let that linger for so long, and it yeah. can bring a back up a bad memory. Yeah. Um, because I did that the other day. I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was something my mom had said, and it made me feel bad. Mm. And it'll crop up. Yeah, and then you it was, it was like. You think, you know, but you can help how you linger on to it. How you linger on to it. And so it was like, wow, that one gesture that she mm -hmm. said made me feel insecure about something mm -hmm. about myself at that time. And still today, it still can. So I decided to tell it to go to hell. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So. Fall up out my face. This is not me. That's not who I am. Right. So I chose to be happy in that moment. That, you know, that, is that, 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 that can happen. You know, um, people can say something to you mm -hmm. and it really just devastates you. And everybody else can love it. But that one person can say something to you and can devastate you. But you got to learn how to tell this thing to go back to hell where it came from because that's where it came from. Right. It came to disturb you. It came to take you off focus on who you are and what you can be. And you end up, like they said, dry bones. You'd be just nothing. Right. But you have to feel good about yourself in order to be able to help somebody else anyway. You know, maybe, maybe you may you not think you're just the perfect person or anything, 
But you got to have something feeling good about yourself. You got to have some positivity about yourself in order to be able to move somebody forward. Mm -hmm. Pull them up out that rut. Right. Get on out of there. Then you got to tell them a joke. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so like doing so this book here, the soup no It's yeah. the soap opera grill. Soap opera. I don't know it's, why I say it's, it's soup. for uh um, like soup. <laughs> it's the when I used to be a waitress, you know, working in restaurants and everything. Mm -hmm. And then on my uh comedy shows on Platinum Films T V, I do a routine dressed up like a waitress. Okay. Mm hmm so when you were when you were a waitress, did you tell jokes to your customers too, the ones that may have came in not feeling too good or Well sometime and uh try to cheer people up. I, I always like to cheer people up. Okay. And uh and the customers sometimes are funny, like the truck driver come in that I used to wait on. The regulars. Yeah. And um uh, so uh he said it, that uh, he was happy that he sat in my section. He went to another restaurant that's got bad service, and he said to the uh, that her tip meter was going backwards. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> and that, then, that's terrible. It is. And then one time, tip I was working on the counter, and, and another truck driver come in, but he was a kind of a small truck driver. You know, mm -hmm. usually they're big and husky. Yeah, and they call him, you know, little peanut. Hmm. And uh, so he sat down on the counter and uh, ordered breakfast. Uh, I gave him his breakfast biscuits and you know eggs and bacon and everything. And these uh, motorcycle men came in and plopped on either side of him, because he was so small they picked on him. So one of them picked up his coffee cup and and started uh, sipping on his coffee and set it down. And he, he never said a word. He just kept eating. Then somebody else grabbed his biscuit and took a bite. And somebody else picked up, the, you know, it's three of them, picked up a piece of bacon. So he just didn't say a word, sat there and ate. And finally he paid his bill and walked on out to his truck. And the, one of the motorcycle men said, uh, you know, Sybil, he wasn't there much of a man, was he? And I said, well, I don't know about that, but I don't think he was much of a truck driver. He just ran over three motorcycles. <laughs> <laughs> good, good job. Wow. That was good. That, that ended well. <laughs> that ended great for me. So wow. Some, Sometimes you can teach people a, a lesson <laughs> without yeah. hurting them. Yeah. yeah I bet that mm -hmm. hurt them, though. Hurt their pocket and everything else. <laughs> I bet they had a fit. They wow. They listen that day. Picked with the wrong one, bro. <laughs> I'm sitting here quiet and everything, but I got a plan. Right. Woo <laughs> Gotta have a Guess plan. what? They didn't touch him. Mm -mm. So since they didn't touch him, he didn't touch them either. He just minded his own business. And, and he even paid the bill. Yeah. Right. He, they messed with his property, too. And gave him a nice tip, you know. I like waiting on truck drivers. Mm -hmm. well, I bet you do, Silver. Yeah. <laughs> I had a saying, don't give me no lip, just leave me your tip. Now, there you, there you, there go. you go. Can you read that poem? Yes. Lula the Liar. Da, oh. da, da, da. Lula the Liar has such low self-esteem. She builds herself up with her evil schemes. She verbally stabs you in the back with a sweet smile on her face. If you look for the truth in her, you will not find a trace. She spins her tales about her victims and she looks you straight into your eyes like a poisonous spider. She weaves webs of lies. If she had a nickel for every lie she told, she would have more money than the bank could hold. Through she is surrounded by pe no, okay. Though she is surrounded by people, she finds that she is alone. Lula, the liar, deceived herself. All trust in her is gone. Wow. Then let me tell so you. That's kind of like what I was reading in the right. beginning. Mm -hmm. And let me like, tell you about, about Lulu. And, and evilness, yeah. you know. Lulu <laughs> and, and a bunch of other poems in there is uh, poems I wrote about real waitresses, mm -hmm. but I changed the names. I kept the characteristics yeah. of them. You know, human nature and everything. We, we all, all of us got room for improvement. 
Exactly. Yeah, uh, all of us know a Lula. <laughs> We definitely all know a Lula. Yes, we definitely all know a Lula the liar. That's right. And what were you saying about this one? I was just saying how how just the word of God was telling us he that he that love is transgressions, love is strife, and he that exalted his gate seeks destruction. She's oh. she destroyed on her own self, all right. by herself. He that has a forward heart fat of no good, and he that has a perverse tongue follows into mischief. But I, but 22, I, that was 20. So in 22, it says, A merry heart does good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dry after the bones. Her bones are all dry and she's, she's, all, alone. she's all alone. Right. Amen. So we just praise and thank God for Sybil coming out here and joining us on tonight. That's a lot of fun. I, I appreciate yeah, that. Uh, find her books. You're an Elvis if. I didn't get a chance a to read one of them. Well, you're, I didn't you're an get a Elvis chance. fan if. You're an Elvis fan if. I'm sorry, you're mm. correct. You're an Elvis fan if. Didn't get a chance to read one of these. Cause we're about out of time. But look for both of her books and look for her on Facebook on the Sybil Presley. Sybil Presley. You'll find me right there. I'm and on YouTube. One and only. I'm on YouTube, Sybil Presley on YouTube. Amen. So mm -hmm. you can find her in those two places. Get her book if you're an Elvis fan if. You got some blue suede shoes, honey. Right. Uh-huh. <laughs> you an Evans fan if you know his music. Like, what was that song again? One of his uh, gospel songs? How Great Thou Art. How Great Thou Art. I yes. talk about I his music CD. in the book. I have, that, I have that CD in my collection. <laughs> your CD in my collection. Amen. So thank you all so much for joining us tonight. Yes, on, uh, thank you. Um, Porch Talk. Thank you, Sybil. Well, I just love the porch talk, and you just keep up your porch talk because you're touching a lot of people, and both yeah. of y'all are just like uh, two peas in the pod. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed myself on porch talk. Amen. Well, so we're thank glad you enjoyed yourself. Yes, thank you so much for coming. And don't you all dare forget to look, look up, up and live. live. Yes. <laughs> we're going to make you fall in love with SVPGB.